On Tuesday, the 28th of October, a new altitude record was reached in November 1-4 Uniform Lima, the Cub Crafters Carbon Cub, UL Cub, the very same yellow Carbon Cub that I tested out in Truckee here a few months ago. And look at this altitude right here, over 35,000 feet. Let's check it out. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and this video is brought to you like all the others, viewers like you that support this channel here on Patreon. Thank you for your support. Here's what this record-breaking altitude attempt sounded like on ATC, live ATC. This video brought to you courtesy of Cub Crafters. 400, go ahead. What, uh, what kind of aircraft is that that's climbing to 35 that's trying to see how high they're gonna go? A PA-18. Wow, guys, a stud. How high was the PA-18 going? Flight level 350. He's currently at a uh, 314. Goodness. And center, uh, do you show a uh, climb rate for 40 from now? November 140 uniform Lima, I show a 400 uh, foot climb rate. 40 from now, Roger, thank you. Absolutely amazing, good job. That was 400, go ahead. Airline traffic talking to him as he approaches 35,000 feet at 100% power with a climb rate of 400 feet per minute. And this is the relatively stock UL Cub. He's still sporting the big, I think, 29 inch bush wheels on here and GoPro cameras mounted all around the aircraft. Here's the team that broke the altitude record. On the left is Tress Clements, uh, the ground support, and the pilot, John Cutwicky from the YouTube channel Fly 8 Mike Alpha and Cal Poly professor Paul Iskold, who's done, overseen several aviation records in the past. And of course the aircraft 14 Uniform Lima still sporting its bush <laughs> extended gear and bush tires and MT propeller. And here's the same aircraft when I got to demo it uh, five months ago up in Truckee. just launched off the ground with that Rotax 916 IS engine. And last summer I had the privilege of flying November 2 for Uniform Lima, the orange Carbon Cub UL powered by the Rotax 916 IS all the way out to Oshkosh and back. And it's this combination of airframe and engine that makes a, an altitude record like this possible in a stock Carbon Cub UL. The whole airplane empty weight only weighs about 900 pounds and the Rotax 916 IS is a turbocharged engine capable of 160 horsepower at max power and can maintain that 160 horsepower all the way up to about 15 to 17,000 feet before you begin to lose the horsepower on that engine. And the limitation here is the turbocharger itself. As the higher you go in altitude, the thinner the air gets. And as the air gets thinner, the turbocharger itself has to spin faster and faster, thus heating up the turbo. And so it's turbo, turbo inlet temperatures and RPM that begin limiting your horsepower out of the engine at the higher altitudes. And here's a rough idea of how that graph looks like. On the blue here is the critical altitude or the of the aircraft and so you're able to get that full power all the way up to 15,000 feet in this example and in this red dotted line is the turbine inlet temperature to the turbo. It continues to climb as you get higher and higher and the air gets thinner and thinner and the turbo spins faster and faster. So after 15,000 feet you begin to lose some power on the engine to the maximum certified altitude of 23 thousand feet. Now how they got it up to 35,000 feet without cooking the turbo um, I will be interesting to see. Did the pilot have to manage that power setting or or did they did the professor and the mechanics limit it using the ECU, the electronic control unit? But looking at this picture taken during the record-breaking uh, altitude that they reached here at 35,000 looks like 730 feet indicated over here by the way this is an unofficial altitude uh, record all of this will have to be certified by the officials 
check this out. The <laughs> indicated airspeed in that thin air is only 61 knots. The true airspeed, 113 knots. The ground speed, 127 knots. And look at that outside air temperature, minus 46 degrees Celsius. But here's the engine. They're running at wide open, 100% throttle, and everything's in the green, 5,826 RPM, still getting 23 inches of manifold pressure at 35,000 feet. EGTs within limits, 1,463 degrees. Cylinder head temperatures at a perfect 162 degrees. Fuel pressure's right up there. And uh, the fuel flow, only 5.7 gallons per hour. Oil pressure right there at 33 PSI. And oil temperature right within spec of 214 degrees. And this is the amazing thing about the Rotax engine. Everything is electronically controlled to maintain the temperatures perfect. And this was my experience flying all the way out to Oshkosh and back. It's a single control lever. And this one even had, or the one I was in, 2.4 Uniform Lima, had a constant speed Kestrel um, propeller on it by Hartzell. And the temperatures, RPM, and everything was simply managed perfectly. There was no mucking about with the... Um, mixture or cow flaps or not even a prop control. The prop control was managed via a, a electronic graph basically and everything just worked perfectly. The engine started like a car and just ran without issue. And this is to me is really the future of aviation. So many folks poo poo these Rotax engines and maybe a, a lot of us had experience maybe way back in the past when they were two cycle engines, but the modern iteration of the Rotax engine really is the way to go. A lightweight, turbocharged, electronically controlled engine. And by the way, 100 low lead fuel is eventually going away and the Rotax engine is already future proofed for all different grades of fuel. And in my opinion, I'd like to see these Rotax engines adapted some, to some of the older airframes and I blasphemously pr proposed a Rotax conversion onto a Luscom and we had some fun with AI to see what that might look like. But I think that would be a, a great way to go to keep these older airframes running for a lo much longer lifespan as these older engines are getting harder and harder to maintain parts for. A lot of great comments here in the comment section. <laughs> yeah, what would that Mach number be at uh, 65 knots indicated airspeed? <laughs> Carbon Cub, say Mach number. Currently Mach 0 0.19, what do you need? Maintain Mach 0 0.2 or less for spacing. And that brings up a couple other fun facts about getting this record is that first off they had to get special permission from the FAA to use the airspace up there at that altitude because above 290 you're in RVSM airspace and this aircraft is not certified for RVSM so they had to get special permission and a special block of airspace in order to do that and of course the pilot had to deal with a full oxygen mask he's completely unpressurized now Back in the day, when I was a T-37 instructor pilot for the Air Force, we flew routinely up to three times a day, up to 25,000 feet and back in unpressurized T-37s, sucking on a hose on the oxygen mask, and it's very fatiguing. So quite a few physiological things that they had to work out with the pilot flying at that high altitude. I saw in one of the pictures he was wearing a oximeter on his finger, smart idea to keep track of his oxygen levels as he was climbing up there make sure that that oxygen continued to flow correctly and of course the other consideration is dealing with the extreme cold at that altitude now the ul cub does have a cabin heater but it's not that great of a heater and it looks like john was uh, well equipped with some climbing type gear to help keep him warm and of course you had the it was about 10 or so in the morning, 10 or 11 in the morning. So you had a lot of good sunlight coming through the plexiglass, giving you some greenhouse effect warming inside the carbon cub. By the way, John also wore a parachute just in case, but he hand flew the thing all the way up and back and said the aircraft performed just fine. So good job team taking an aircraft that can land and take off in just 200 feet, all the way up to over 37,000 feet. Looks like 37,609 feet.
Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. Aviation is fun. See you here.